Welcome to The Art of Volunteering. I'm your host, Stormy Bell. Uh, today, I'm here with a fellow alumnus. We overlapped our years in college while attending LaSalle College, now LaSalle University. Shirley is the founding member of Student Assisting Students, a 100% volunteer group who packs care bags for college students in need. So Shirley, Fan, Chan, please introduce yourself to our audience. Thank you, Stormy, for having me being here today to talk about something that I'm very passionate about and have been doing it for over seven years. It's, uh, it's an organization that I founded with a couple of my friends called Students Assisting Students. Uh, the origin of this program actually started from a very organically. Um, it's really because the work that I do so just to give you a bit of context of how I came to this point to create this project for uh, for the for the, such a long time, I actually had opportunity to work for a high education institutions in Massachusetts University of uh, Massachusetts Boston, and I had the privilege to open an office on campus to serve homeless and foster care students. Through that experience, I met a lot of students who were struggling, who were underserved, who were underprivileged. Uh, because of that experience, but also I had my own personal experience that I have three sons, and one of my sons actually was on his way to college. And during that time, we were talking about, oh, on your way to college, who can support you? Um, what do you need? Being a mom, I always want to make sure my son had everything throughout the school year. And this is very typical, right? Every parent who has a child who is on their way to go to college or they have gone into college. And the first thing is, oh, do they need anything? Do I need to send them anything? Do I need to buy them anything? Um, on campus, when I was doing my job, um, many times students would come to my office and ask for supplies, as simple as a pen or a writing pad. Um, so that idea actually was grew from the job that I was doing during the day when I was at work. Um, students had come to my office for different needs, different reasons. And then when I went home and I said to my son, and I said, you're very lucky that you have a mom who could provide all this stuff to you as simple as the stationary school supplies or, or snack. But for students that I work with, they never had those people around them to provide those care package. So that's how the idea grew. And I just grabbed my friends uh, who always volunteered with me. And I said, hey, <laughs> I have this idea in mind. And you know how that worked, right? When you have friends, yeah. <laughs> um, you kind of like, corrupt them into that idea it's like you know what they really need it they don't have family like you and me to support our children so that's how we started we started very small um we at the beginning actually the project only provided to the uh foster care youth who were on their way to post-secondary education because back then i actually have a couple of foster care students on campus that i was working with and a lot of times, because they were in the state system, they never have any family members supporting them. And because of that, I automatically became that trusted adult in their lives. And they would come to me for anything that they need or they want to talk about anything. So because mm -hmm. of that, the orig original of this project was only provide those care backs to a Department of Family and Children's Services who uh, they, they have a group of foster care youth who were on their way to applying to colleges and universities. So that's how we started uh, okay. in 2013. Wow. And how many students do you uh, give these packages to now? You started humbly. So where are you at? <laughs> well, um, we just finished. Uh, you, so what we do is we provide care packages uh, twice a year for the fall semester and the spring semester. So we just finished the spring semester packages a month ago. We did 300 backs and nice. we divided into uh, five campuses. So we have contact among state university and community colleges in Massachusetts. And we would reach out to them every semester, begin, the beginning of the semester. And we ask them if they would like to get some care package, packages for their uh, students who are struggling, food insecurity mm -hmm. and housing insecurity. And a lot of times their response was a, yeah, absolutely, we'd love to have support. And that's how we started. And interestingly, I think we all had gone through the past two years with COVID, right? And I think mm -hmm. many of us kind of like um, 
instructors at home and not realizing we actually have so many students out there, we're not getting any needs and services met. So last fall, I actually got an email from one of my campus contacts and asked for help because when they reopened the campus after lockdown, they emailed me and say, hey, Shirley, I actually want to ask you if you guys have any supplies that you can provide to us because reopening the campuses, we're going to see a lot of needs coming into our office. And because of that email last fall, I kind of like did the things that I knew how to do it is call all my friends to action and say, <laughs> hey, this is what happened. We need 300 bucks. Are you in? And the response was just so amazing. And I was really thankful for all my friends in my community who come forward to, to support this project. Very cool. Where do your donations come from? Like, how do you collect all the supplies? Um, the donations actually came from the community, words of mouth. Um, okay. Our group is just like you mentioned earlier, our group is uh, 100% volunteer. So we don't do fundraising. We're not 501c. We all rely on uh, donations from uh, any members who is interested in this project. So it's really based on the word of mouth. Uh, we spread it out through social media, which is the Facebook mm -hmm. and Instagram. So we have a core group of uh, folks that like myself who volunteer in this project and we just spread the words out and we collect donations. Some folks that um, they, instead of giving us donations, they would uh, write us a check and we would use the cash okay. to go buy the supply. Very cool. Now I know um, we, we've talked just a little bit. Uh, you use a lot of students in your, in the, mm -hmm. I guess the packing, but what else do they do and how does that play into like student leadership? The student leadership piece actually where it came up from my son when he was in high school, when he found out this is the project that I was doing. And he actually initiated uh, a couple of his friends to participate. So what they did was they helped us to fundraise. So one of his friends was a member of a drama club. And that's how it all started. Um, when he was doing the the drama uh, throughout the school year, um, once a year, at the end of the theater uh, play, they actually made a pledge in front of all the audience and, and introduced the project that we were doing. And then people would put money in, literally is the job. And like $5, $1, and that's how they start fundraising. And because of that experience, I realized that this is such a great opportunity for young people like the high school, junior, seniors to learn about how fortunate they were in that position, but they also have the power to help other students similar to them that they are actually moving on to post-secondary education. So I, I thought that idea was so wonderful. And I told my friends, how about we continue to recruit young, young people from high school? And we all love that idea. So since then, we have nonstop uh, recruiting high school students to participate in this project. So they can do different roles. They can help us to do fundraising if they have a fundraising idea. Uh, some of them, like, for example, one of my sons uh, who belonged to a karate school and one of the student leaders from the karate class took the initiative to fundraise during the karate classes and, and okay. don't, uh, fundraise cash for us to go buy supplies. So it's a different idea, different way, depends on the student leader, how they want to do it. And this year, the student leader was helping us to like do a lot of supplies coordination, collecting the donations, uh, counting the donations, make sure the donations are all in place when we at the, on the packing day. So it's really, we're giving them different roles. Depends on the age, of course. Um, usually for the high school students, we delegate more tasks, more responsibilities to them. If they were the middle school students who wants to come and volunteer, we assign them to come to volunteer the day of the packing to do the packing. Okay. But how many volunteers do you have? Like, like your packing day was what, April 9th? Was that yeah. your last packing day? How many, yeah. like that day, how many students did you have? We have about 10, 10 students okay. at least, because people came and go. I didn't even count okay. it. Yeah. Um, and then we all, always have a group of adults. We call those counter. Mm -hmm. So the adults like myself we were the one that who, uh, did all the arrangement, all the uh, setup. And then once a the student arrived and then we would show them how to pack the bags and then they would just go, just like an assembly line in the factory. Yeah. <laughs> and they would just go around the table and pick up everything and then put it in a bag and then hand it to the adult and then the adult would um, count them. 
We also have a small group of uh, adult and students. They're writing the chia card. Now, this is something that we believe just to giving a bag. Sometimes the student didn't know what was all about. So we decide that to give them a chia card in the bag so they know that actually a group of people somewhere care about them, want to make sure they have their needs, want to make sure that they know that we're cheering them when they're doing the school in, in the post-secondary education. So that's why we also have a group of volunteers sitting at the side table to write the cheer card. That's awesome. Have you received any feedback from the students who received the bags? Like, have you, do you know the impact that it's made or anything like yeah. that? Yeah. Once in a while, we have a thank you card from the student nice. going through the campus office to send it back to us. And I think the appreciation definitely was there. And one card that really touched my heart was saying that, she was glad that someone was thinking of her. And that's something that I think anyone who, who read that card was so touched because this is exactly what we want to do is to remind them that they are not alone in what, what they're doing. We have a group of people, we have a community behind them, cheering for them, make sure that they will, success, they will succeed in the education. Nice, very nice. I don't really have any more like outright questions, but I would love to hear um, some stories like just uh, a volunteering or your origins or the impact. Just just tell me some stories that you've experienced. Sure. And a lot of my friends always ask me, well, why are you doing what you're doing? Because you're constantly finding projects to volunteer. And I think this is something that we all agree with our society, with our community, we need we all we will always need someone to give back. We'll always need someone to make sure the unfortunate, the underserved, the underprivileged folks will get support that they need because we're very fortunate to have the support that we need. Um, so I constantly looking for different project ideas. So this is the Care Bear project is one of my uh, other many other volunteer projects that I'm working on. And I think this is something that I, um, my friends sometimes ask me, so how, how could they do the same thing? And I think this is kind of the word of advice, uh, advice that I always give it to my friend is find your passion, find what you believe in, because what you believe in, what your values is, is going to guide what you want to volunteer for your community, right? And also I have this philosophy because my uh, profession is, I work for nonprofits for many years since I graduated from college. So that's my calling, right? So helping other, giving back. And I think one thing that we need to know is anytime when you turn around, when you see someone in need, you may think that, well, I'm only one person. I can only do so much, but actually it's not. You're doing a community work. You, you actually, by being one person, you can ask around, ask your friends, ask your family, you create a community of support for those underprivileged, underserved. And I think that's kind of my philosophy, whatever volunteer project that I am working on. I always have a group of volunteers that we all get together. We all share the same beliefs, same values. And we all believe that giving back, helping others is what we are here for. And I, and I think this is what we talked about is it took a village to raise a child. It took a community to make sure that our community is being well being well served. So I think that's kind of the things that I, I use it as my guiding guiding principle. That's awesome. Very cool. I think people don't realize the how much they can make an impact just with a simple Absolutely. gesture. It doesn't have to be changing, you know, like how am I going to change the world? It's like, no, just help the person, your neighbor. J just exactly. go across the street and say, can I help you? Or, you know, something exactly. simple. And exactly. it, th what it does is tenfold, hundredfold of, of what you're giving. Exactly. And you made a good point, Stormy. Like, for example, someone say, well, my neighbor needs help because they're aging. So you're helping one neighbor. But then, then you start to think about, oh, if I have one neighbor that who needs the help, maybe another aging neighbor in the neighborhood or down the street also need help. How can I make sure this is happening in our community? And once you spread the words out, other people would just take it, take it on, right? So I think this is exactly the the idea is you you start something, but and then other people can also scale in to replicate that kind of a work and the volunteer work. Mm -hmm. 
Now, have you, give me, I'm going to ask you a blooper, something that you did that didn't turn out right, or something you saw your, your leaders or your students do that didn't turn out right, but they learned something from it. Um, it's just so many, so many in, in, like example that I can uh, think about is, it's not about doing right, it's when you when you're trying to plan a project like this volume, I think it's we really learn on the go. So many times that every year we have to be very organized. And I the first few years we didn't have that kind of a learning experience. And a lot of time we so this is this is how we, we understand counting is so important. Why we actually assign adults as a counter because through for the beginning, when we first started the project, we didn't realize that counting actually was so critical for us to make sure we have enough backs. We also need to divide the backs to each campus because we have six campuses that we need to deliver to, and each campus should have the right number. So we didn't do it very well back then. So that's the reason we now learning what we learned from the beginning, we assign adult to be the counter. That makes such a big difference for the past few years from our packing experience, having two adults just responsible to count. Other adults would be doing quality control or troubleshoot, make sure the students have any questions. So we found out that having an adult counter would just make our life so much easier in the whole project. So that's really what we learned during that time, I can think of. Awesome. I totally appreciate that. All right. It come, we we're to the time in the show where I ask you to love on students assisting students. Just love on it. Share why people should donate, why the students should get involved. Um, just, just love on it. Uh, why people want to donate? Because think about a group of students who are out there by on their own without parents, without family supporting them, and we are the parents. And when I say we are the parents, because we're the parents of this whole community, we're the parents of the society, we're, we're parents of every children uh, in the community. So if they are needing our support, why not? And I think that's how I ask other folks that, especially a lot of uh, my community volunteers, their parents themselves, and they can relate to it. Uh, why student wants to get involved? Because it's a great opportunity to open their eyes, to understand, what is the unfortunate, what is the underserved populations, what would they need? Because they, a lot of time, our students didn't understand, well, we talk about food insecurity, which means they don't have meal on the table. Not necessary. They might not even, they may not just have enough food to eat. They have food, but they don't have enough food to eat. So that's the difference, right? So I think mm -hmm. students using those opportunities to understand what is different issues? What is different populations that need that? And for them, actually, I feel like we're creating this social responsibility among the younger generation. So I think for the students to get involved, it's, it's really great for them to understand we're responsible for our community. We're responsible for our society. So I think that's one thing that I always engage students to say, learn about the world. <laughs> this is the first step. Yeah. Absolutely. And also the peer support peers is really important. Yes, that opens their eyes. And there's having that hands-on and, and getting to know someone at that, that age, it makes an impact for the rest of their lives. It becomes volunteering or, or reaching out or mentoring becomes a core value that stays with them from the time they're 16 to the time they're 96. It can exactly. just become a, a guiding principle in their lives. That's awesome. Exactly. Now, if my listeners want to get to know uh, more about students assisting students, how would they, where would they go? How would they find you? So we have a website, it's uh, www.studentswithassistingstudents.org. Uh, so we're based in Massachusetts. And if anyone who is outside of Massachusetts wants to donate, we do. Uh, we're in the process of creating a signed up link on website. So you can okay. sign up by like ordering whatever on the list and ship it to the locations that we designated. And we usually do um, donation drive twice a year, the beginning of the fall semester and the beginning of the spring semester. Awesome, very cool. 
Well, Shirley, thank you for being on um, The Art of Volunteering. I really appreciated this conversation. I think it's eye-opening for a lot of people because um, you just don't think of college students as being having food insecurity and it's so much more prevalent than people realize. So I wanna thank you. And I ask my listeners to join in next time. And um, till then, just look for look to impact your neighbor. Just find a way to go across the street and do something kind. You don't know how much that will mean. Well, thank you and have a great day.